The heavy snow had been falling all day and into the deep night. The lights in the Wudong Lane behind the Huanyu International Building were twinkling. Fue, the owner of the Rose Dumpling Shop, was settling accounts and preparing to close. The shop door opened and a short-haired young girl walked in. Auntie, are there any dumplings left? The girl's eyes were red and swollen, avoiding eye contact, clearly having cried recently. What filling do you want? Let me see if I can make it for you, Fue said, putting away the account book and retying her apron. The girl timidly pointed to the menu above the counter. I want the three delicacies filling, just a half portion. Is that okay? What a coincidence. Fue also loved the three delicacies filling and had saved a portion for herself today. Sure, have a seat and give me a few minutes. Thank you, Auntie. The girl walked in, found a seat, and sat down, behaving so docilely that it bordered on timidity. Fue returned to the kitchen, washed her hands, boiled a pot of water, and then began preparing the dumplings at the counter. She mixed the half bowl of meat filling until it was well-seasoned and firm, chopped a strand of fresh green chives into it, and fetched 12 large live prawns from the shrimp tank. The lively prawns were shelled, deveined, and rinsed clean. The dough was rolled into strips, cut into 12 equal parts, and rolled into thin wrappers. Holding a wrapper in her left hand, she placed a spoonful of firm meat filling and a large prawn in the center, and with a pinch of both hands, a thin-skinned, large-filled three delicacies dumpling was made. Once twelve dumplings were ready, the water had come to a boil. She threw in six dumplings, boiled until they floated, added a spoonful of cold water, and repeated this process three times. The dumplings were perfectly cooked, with the shrimp retaining their tender texture. She scooped the dumplings onto a slotted plate, filled a bowl with clear dumpling soup, and served it with bright red chili oil, golden garlic paste, and green scallions and cilantro, all on a tray. The girl smelled the aroma, put down her phone, and looked at the tray in Fue's hands with shining eyes, obviously very hungry. Careful, it's hot, Fue warned with a smile. The girl eagerly poked open a dumpling, picked out the shrimp, and put half a dumpling into her mouth. You don't eat shrimp? Fue was puzzled by her eating habit, feeling a bit sorry for her lively prawns. The girl hesitated at her question. No, I do. I love shrimp. I'm just used to saving it for last. Many people save the best for last, and Fue seemed to understand. The girl, however, suddenly teared up. Auntie, please don't laugh at me. I'm 19 and have never eaten a complete three delicacies dumpling. Fue felt sorry for her. From the moment the girl walked in, she sensed that this was a child no one cared for. Whenever we had three delicacies dumplings at home, my mom would always break mine open and give the shrimp to my brother. The girl intended to say this with a smile, but ended up crying, my brother and I are twins, but my mom said shrimp and meat are for boys. If girls eat them, they'll die. Fue slammed the table in anger. Your mom lied to you. Don't believe her. When she gets old, don't even bring her water. Just tell her it will kill you. Fue normally avoided discussing other people's affairs, but this mother was truly heartless. Not only did she not let her daughter eat good food, but she also scared her with such awful lies. She deserved her fate. Today is our birthday. My mom sent my brother 5,000 yuan to buy dumplings. He posted on social media about treating 10 friends to hot pot, but I came home to a bowl of leftover rice. I told my mom it was my birthday too. She said I should send my brother a red envelope because I only have a birthday because of him. What nonsense. Fue was furious. My brother is in college. I started working at a milk tea shop at 18, earning 3,600 yuan. My mom made me give her 3,300. With the remaining 300, I buy crepes for lunch, but it's not enough. By afternoon, I'm so hungry I feel dizzy. I hate my mom. I never want to go back to that house. Then don't go back. Don't give her any money. With 3,600 a month, you can rent a small place with a few hundred yuan. Cook for yourself, eat well, and save some money. Girls are human too. It doesn't matter if others don't care for you. You have to learn to care for yourself. Auntie, you're so kind. The girl was silent for a moment, seemingly enlightened, then wiped her tears and smiled. 
Hue smiled and brought out her own late night snack. I always offer a birthday gift here. Today, I'll give you another half portion of dumplings. Happy birthday. In the future, make more money and buy whatever you want to eat. Fue's sudden fame. On the morning of little new year, Fue got up early to buy groceries and found her shop door blocked. A crowd of strangers, armed with cameras and filming equipment, began snapping pictures of her as if she were a rare find. Hey, what are you doing? Who gave you permission to take my picture? Delete them right now. Fue grabbed a balding middle-aged man's camera, demanding he delete the photos. The balding, short, and chubby man gave a sheepish smile. Don't misunderstand, Ms. Fu. I'm Kong Wenxing, CIO of Tianxiu New Star Media. We're here to invite you to be the main speaker for our culinary program. It's a hit across major platforms with tens of millions of followers. Heh, don't try to fool me. Isn't it just a cooking show? Fue retorted. Miss Fue, let me explain. I'm Zhang Xiaomei, a blogger from Xiaomei's Food Discoveries. I came specifically to see you, interjected a fashionable young woman, cutting off calm winching. First, I want to interview you, and second, I want to try your special, love-filled dumplings and give you some free publicity. Love-filled dumplings. Fue was baffled. What are you talking about? Who are you people? Calm Wenxing and Zhang Xiaomei exchanged puzzled looks. Zhang Xiaomei cautiously asked, Miss Fue, do you use Douyin? Fue shook her head. She didn't enjoy browsing her phone, finding those staged videos distasteful. Oh my, no wonder you're so calm. Look at this. Zhang Xiaomei, excited as if she had found a treasure, opened a Douyin video and showed it to Fue. The video thumbnail featured the rose dumpling shop with the title, on my 19th birthday, I had my first complete three delicacies dumpling. The content was a series of Weibo screenshots, detailing the events between Fue and the young girl from that night. In the post, the girl mentioned that she had planned to find a clean place to slit her wrists that night, but decided to try a complete three delicacies dumpling at the Rose Dumpling Shop instead. The kind words and half-portion dumplings from the beautiful auntie saved her, making her realize that life still held hope, and she thanked the auntie for giving her a new beginning. The short piece was tear-jerking. Fue wasn't thrilled. She was scared. Who posted this? The original blogger is a nobody, but her Weibo post was shared by a major influencer and turned into a short video on Douyin. Overnight, it garnered millions of views. You're now a symbol of positivity, touching the hearts of netizens. Zhang Xiaomei's exaggerated tone was both surprising and annoying. Fue was even angrier, a symbol of positivity. She paid to eat dumplings here, and we chatted a bit. Why are you all so moved? I don't have any love-filled dumplings, nor do I need any publicity. Please leave. Miss Fue, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to promote truth, goodness, and beauty. Spreading positive energy, Zhang Xiaomei said, her tone a bit displeased at Fue's resistance. Calm Wenxing chimed in, Miss Fu, don't worry. I can see your shop's daily revenue doesn't exceed a thousand yuan. By joining our program, you could become a famous culinary expert, advertising your shop, getting endorsements, and possibly even turning it into a chain, opening a company, and going public. I'm not interested in any of that. Leave now. I need to buy groceries, Fue said, locking the shop door and walking briskly towards the alley entrance, leaving the bloggers and the CIO standing there in disbelief. She didn't want to be famous at all, but unfortunately, the tree wants to remain still, yet the wind keeps blowing. Whether she liked it or not, her little rose dumpling shop had become famous. At 11 o'clock, when the shop opened as usual, it was overrun by various internet celebrities. Many regular customers couldn't find seats and joked that they probably wouldn't be able to afford the dumplings anymore. Fue didn't mind the teasing from her regulars. What angered her were the persistent internet celebrities. One after another, they ordered three delicacies dumplings, insisting on calling them love-filled dumplings, showing their knack for hype. Even worse were the mukbang streamers, who ordered everything on the menu, filling the table with dishes, stuffing their mouths, smacking their lips, and making such a spectacle that it ruined the appetite of those around them. 
Seeing that the genuine diners were leaving, Fuwei could no longer tolerate it and was about to ask them to leave when more laughter came from outside. A middle-aged woman, dressed like a wedding singer, walked in. She was even bolder, holding a selfie stick, recording as she walked, muttering, Hey folks, today we're having a simple lunch at our local dumpling shop. Look at all these people, business is booming. Wow, aren't these famous folks? Stop recording, Fuwei stepped forward and covered her phone. No videos allowed here. Hey, sister-in-law, why are you being unreasonable? Everyone else is recording, why can't I? The woman, half joking, half serious, grinned widely. Fuwei turned to the influencers seated in her shop. There's nothing worth filming in my little place. Everyone, put away your cameras. If you want to eat dumplings, just eat. When you're done, please leave. Oh, is this lady also in the same business? Are you related to Ms. Fu? CIO Kong Wenqing, who had been sitting for over an hour with a plate of dumplings, finally found a topic to latch onto. Yes, yes, I'm her sister-in-law, Mei Xian. Back when she was pregnant, she came to my house for prenatal care. Sister-in-law. Fu Wei, genuinely angry now, coldly interrupted her. I'm very busy here. If you have something to discuss, wait for Jiang Dongsheng to come back. I'm not looking for him. I'm here to eat our famous three delicacies dumplings. What? Are you not going to serve me? May Xian feigned affection despite being coldly rejected. She was Fu Wei's husband's elder sister-in-law, a lifelong housewife who spent her days gossiping and bickering with her mother-in-law. Now in her late 40s, she had become an internet celebrity with her mother-in-law, making tacky videos. Fu Wei had cut off her internet connection to avoid being pestered by them for likes and comments. So, despite May Exion's persistent cajoling, Fu Wei stood her ground. We're not serving you. We're out of three delicacies dumplings today, and I'm closing soon. Everyone, please finish up and leave. Seeing her unyielding stance, the room fell into an awkward silence. May Exion, however, remained unfazed. Sister-in-law, don't be so petty. Remember those three delicacies dumplings you ate at our place? I didn't eat them. Fue shot back, fed up with her persistence. I've never eaten your dumplings. My dumpling shop has nothing to do with you. Your surname is Mei minus Fu. Sister-in-law, you can't be so heartless. No matter our last names, our husbands are brothers, right? Whether you ate those dumplings or not, our mom made them for you, didn't she? Fu Wei, tired of arguing, pulled out her phone and called her husband, Jiang Dongsheng. He was in medical equipment sales and often traveled. Though not clingy, receiving her call during the day made him anxious. What's wrong, honey? Your sister wants to film in my shop. Can you talk to her? Fu Wei, usually independent, couldn't deal with her in-laws and often had to involve Jiang Dongsheng. His tone immediately grew stern. Let me speak to her. Fu Wei handed the phone to Mei Exian. Despite usually being intimidated by Jiang Dongsheng's temper, Mei Exian boldly took the phone. Dongsheng, I'm just here to eat dumplings. Why is your wife so defensive? You can eat dumplings anywhere. Why bother her? If you have something to discuss, talk to me. If not, go home. Zhang Dongsheng was always firm in defending Fu Wei. Mei Xian had been waiting for this. Actually, there's something. Your brother's company isn't doing well, and I'm the breadwinner. I'm hoping you can help us out. Fu Wei is sharp and capable. Maybe you can lend us a hand. Mei Xian continued. I'm back tomorrow. We'll talk then. For now, don't disrupt her business. Jiang Dongxing's tone was authoritative. Mei Xian agreed reluctantly. All right, I'll leave. By the way, did you know your wife is quite the celebrity now? The shop is packed with people. What celebrity? Jiang Dongsheng, who didn't follow online gossip, was puzzled. Fu Wei snatched the phone back. It's nothing serious. Just online nonsense. We'll talk when you're back. Bye. Mei Xian didn't push further. She looked at Kong Wenqing. Hey, you look familiar. Shall we leave together? Kong Wenqing quickly packed up and left with her, followed by the other influencers. Finally, the shop was quiet. But Fu Wei's phone rang again. It seemed the ordeal wasn't over. Her mother-in-law, Wu Yun, was gearing up for action. 
Fue ignored the calls, letting them ring through three times without answering. Her relationship with her mother-in-law was beyond strained. It was a deep-seated resentment that she felt could never be resolved. The same went for Mei Axian. She had only lived in the Jiang household for half a day before engaging in a fierce rivalry with her sister-in-law. These old grudges all stemmed from a seemingly trivial issue involving three delicacies dumplings. The thought of it was laughable, and yet Mei Axian still had the nerve to bring it up. Fuwei's real concern was for the young girl. She wasn't typically a saintly person, but she empathized with the girl and had given her extra dumplings and kind words out of that empathy. She had no idea the girl was on the brink of despair, ready to end her life. Seeing the screenshots of her Weibo post filled Fuwei with a deep sense of dread. A 19-year-old girl, finding solace in a stranger's warmth and deciding against suicide, was normal to share on social media. But now that her dumpling shop had been exposed, Fuwei worried that the girl might not escape the prying eyes of overzealous influencers. She feared the situation could escalate and reach the girl's family, pushing her further into despair. Growing increasingly uneasy, Fuwei put up a temporarily closed sign, locked up the shop, and downloaded Douyin. After a few swipes, she found the video titled Three Delicacies Dumplings. The numbers were even more astonishing now, but the comments had taken a nasty turn. Some accused the girl of being ungrateful, not mentioning her mother's sacrifices and nitpicking over a shrimp. Others indignantly argued that the girl had no right to expect the same treatment as her brother since boys were meant to carry on the family name. Despite societal progress, some ignorance remained unshakable. Fue quickly grew irritated with the comments. Scrolling further, she saw numerous videos of influencers visiting her shop and rumors that the original Weibo post had been deleted, with the girl possibly going off the grid, leading to suspicions of it all being a publicity stunt. Fuwei hoped it was just a prank and not that the girl had lost her freedom. Being targeted by influencers was a nightmare for anyone. Had Fuwei been kinder to those people today, her shop would have been even more chaotic, especially with someone like Mei Axian around. Mei Axian was a one-woman drama and who knew how much she had revealed to those influencers. While pondering her next move, Zhang Dongsheng called, asking why she hadn't answered her phone, suspecting his mother had complained. I didn't want to pick up. I know what she wants. Tell her I won't cooperate with Mei Axian's publicity stunts, Fuwei replied coolly. Jiang Dongsheng was taken aback, momentarily speechless. Their child was 18 now, but the poor relationship between Fuwei and her mother-in-law always cast a shadow over their marriage. In public, Jiang Dongsheng defended Fuwei without question, but in private, he still hoped she could get along with his mother. But Fuwei couldn't let go. The half day she spent in the Jiang household 18 years ago had left scars she could never forgive. She couldn't explain it to Jiang Dongsheng. Is the online story true? He asked, trying to soothe her. Fuwei didn't deny it. The girl has deleted her Weibo post. I saw the screenshots. Did you say those things to her because of your own pain? Yes, Fuwei admitted. Honey, I know you're sympathetic to what I went through, but I've let it go long ago. I don't want you to live with hatred forever. I can't. Fuwei's heart was like ice. Jiang Dongsheng was the second son, an unexpected blessing to his parents. He grew up with his brother's leftovers, hand-me-downs, and unwanted items. He didn't get to go to school, had no house when he got married, and had to live with his in-laws, enduring his family's scorn for being a stay-at-home son-in-law. He could let go of his own grievances, but he could never forgive the hurt inflicted on Fuwei by his family. Fine, forget I said anything. Jiang Dongsheng sighed deeply and hung up. Fuwei gave up on seeking his advice. After some thought, she decided the best course of action was to do nothing and wait for the attention to die down. Yet, Fuwei underestimated the media's ability to twist facts and the speed at which influencers could spread their content. That night, she tossed and turned before finally falling asleep, only to be jolted awake by a loud crash from downstairs. Someone had smashed the window of her dumpling shop, accompanied by a man's furious shouting, demanding she come out. Fuwei quickly called the police. 
Listening closely, she realized the man must be the girl's family member, accusing her of instigating rebellion and encouraging the girl to run away from home, demanding she return his daughter. Peeking out from her second floor window, Fue saw the man sitting in the snowy street, yelling and cursing, with several others filming the scene with their phones. Their eyes glowed eerily in the night, indicating a premeditated act of violence. Not wanting to provide more fodder for them, Fue decided not to go downstairs. The shop's surveillance cameras would capture everything, ensuring the perpetrators wouldn't escape justice. Opening Douyin, she saw that the Three Delicacies Dumplings video had taken a turn for the worse. The girl's Weibo post was still being circulated, but the narrative had shifted. There were accusations against the girl for being ungrateful and petty over a shrimp, alongside arguments asserting that daughters had no right to expect equal treatment to sons. These comments infuriated Fue. She quickly realized where these slanderous videos were coming from. Seeing Mei Exion mingling with influencers earlier in the day had already set off alarms in her mind. Mei Exion, true to her name, was heartless and indiscreet, willing to spout nonsense without thinking. These distorted videos likely had her fingerprints all over them. Who else would know about Fue's strained family relations? Fue didn't mind being called cold-hearted. Her husband, Jiang Dongsheng, had sensed her resentment toward his mother during their earlier phone call. Fuwei detested hiding her feelings, pretending to forgive, or swallowing her anger. No one deserved unfair treatment in their own family. If that was the case, then it was better to part ways. Twisting her advice to the girl into an incitement was a deliberate distortion of the truth, meant to stir up hatred. As she scrolled and recorded videos for evidence, Fuwei followed all the dubious accounts, suspecting that some of the people outside might be among them. Fuwei loathed influencers who would do anything for attention, creating mental garbage online and leeching off others' fame. Restaurants targeted by such influencers often experienced a rapid rise and fall. Such establishments faced scrutiny, with accusations of poor hygiene or bad ingredients. Some even had their private lives exposed, disrupting their family's peace. The police arrived quietly, like a divine intervention, scattering the perpetrators like startled rabbits. Only then did Fue head downstairs, asking the glass-smashing man what had happened to the girl. The drunk man, the girl's father, complained to the police, claiming his daughter had been brainwashed by Fue and had run away after receiving her salary, causing the family immense worry. The police, hearing his story, called the girl's phone number for verification. The girl answered, saying she was out of town, had found a new job, and was doing well. After thorough questioning, the police confirmed she was safe and free, relaying her words to her father. That's not acceptable. She ran away to avoid giving us her salary. I didn't raise her for nothing, he fumed. And what about her dowry when she gets married? The girl's father shared the same outdated views as her mother, proving they were a match. The police were having none of it, explaining that as an adult, the girl had the right to make her own decisions, and the law didn't require her to hand over her salary to her parents. The girl's father, left speechless by the police's reprimand, provided the names of the influencers who had led him to the shop. Without their help, he wouldn't have found it. The police, visibly angered, scolded the influencers for their reckless behavior, pleading with them to stop spreading falsehoods and causing trouble. They were constantly busy debunking rumors and resolving conflicts born from misinformation, and they begged the influencers to stop pushing their so-called positive energy and mind their own business. There were certain so-called positive energies even the police couldn't control. The news of the vandalism at Rose Dumpling House spread quickly, and by dawn, more people were snooping around for material, hiding in corners and secretly filming. Jiang Dongsheng returned half a day early. Workers were already replacing the glass. Fu Wei, seeing his knowing look, didn't bother explaining further. The couple busied themselves, assisting the workers with the installation. As they wiped the dust, Fu Wei laughed, saying, When my dad ran his clinic, people often broke down the door in the middle of the night, sick with a fever, to get treated. If they couldn't cure someone, they blamed my dad's medical skills. Even when they did get better, they'd break down the door again, claiming someone else said the treatment shouldn't have cost that much. 
That's why your dad didn't want you to study medicine. Jiang Dongsheng chuckled bitterly. He knew how hard it is to heal people's minds. Who would have thought running a dumpling shop could lead to this? Dumplings are like people, Fuei smiled. The skin is the face, the filling is the heart. Whether it's genuine or cooked, no one can tell from the outside. That's why so many people like to play tricks with dumplings, making a big deal out of them. You've become quite the dumpling master since marrying me, Jiang Dongsheng teased. How much human wickedness have you seen to come up with such wisdom? Just one experience was enough. I wish I had never learned to make dumplings, Fu Wei said, her heart heavy with mixed emotions. She lost her mother at three, and her father was always busy, so she rarely tasted dumplings growing up. As a child, she longed for them, and her father would joke that she'd have dumplings once she got married, with her mother-in-law making them. Ironically, her first dumpling meal at her in-laws became a farewell meal. Once everything was tidied up, Fuei insisted on opening the shop as usual. Jiang Dongsheng didn't stop her. He wanted to see who else dared to cause trouble, ready to give them a stern warning. As they returned from buying groceries, they found people already gathered outside. Jiang Dongsheng shouted that video recording was prohibited and told them to leave. Surprisingly, they protested, claiming they weren't there to film. It turned out they had seen the influencer videos from the previous day and were enticed by the heartwarming dumplings, eager to try them. Fu Wei, caught between amusement and exasperation, explained that there were no special dumplings, just ordinary three-delicacy dumplings, and due to limited handmade supply, it wasn't worth making a special trip. Despite her explanations, they couldn't resist the influx of eager customers. It seemed blessings and curses were intertwined. Since the customers weren't causing trouble, Fuei couldn't turn them away and open the shop as usual, welcoming the patrons. Thanks to the prior warning against video recording, the day proceeded more smoothly than the previous one. Despite being busy, it was less chaotic. However, things took a turn when Wu Yun arrived with Meixin. They were desperate for fame. Wu Yun loudly demanded to taste Fuei's dumplings, claiming she needed to check if they still had the Jiang family's flavor. Meixin chimed in, recounting how Fuei grew up motherless and had her first three delicacy dumplings at the Jiang household. Their theatrical back and forth attracted the diner's attention, who eagerly watched the drama unfold, some even sneaking out their phones to record despite the no filming rule. Jiang Dongshan grew impatient, and his tone became harsh. Fu Wei, noticing Meixin live streaming, feared Jiang Dongsheng might get caught in a social media storm. She stepped out, lifting the curtain. Winter Sheng, mom is right. The dumpling skills I have, I learned from her. It's only right to show our gratitude with the meal. Please invite mom in to check my skills. Put up a sign saying we're sold out for the day. Jiang Dongsheng, taken aback, stared at her in disbelief. He knew his wife well enough to know she wasn't one to be morally coerced. Her sudden change in demeanor left him puzzled. Sister-in-law, come in too. Isn't this a live stream? Fu Wei extended an olive branch to Meixin. Meixin, overjoyed, exclaimed, Yes, yes. Look, everyone, a grand reunion at Rose Dumpling House. Sister-in-law, say hi to the fans. Fu Wei smiled and waved at the camera. Hello, everyone. Today, I'll show you the dumpling skills taught by my mother-in-law and share our story. Stay tuned for surprises. Okay, okay, let's go. Meixin urged Wu Yun into the kitchen. Fu Wei asked Meixin to hand her phone to Jiang Dongsheng so that the three women could appear on camera together. Wu Yun acted like a leader inspecting the troops, constantly pointing out flaws and complaining. Fu Wei ignored her and began washing vegetables and peeling shrimp, all while telling Meixin's followers her story. She shared how she grew up without a mother and had never tasted homemade dumplings. When she was 20, she met Jiang Dongsheng, who was promoting medical equipment at her father's clinic. They fell in love at first sight. Dongsheng mentioned that his mother made the best dumplings, and Fu Wei had looked forward to tasting them ever since. They got married but couldn't afford their own home, so they stayed with her father. Thus, she still didn't get to eat those dumplings. When she became pregnant, her father passed away unexpectedly. Overcome with grief, she had a threatened miscarriage. 
After arranging her father's funeral, Dongsheng had to go on a business trip and sent her to her mother-in-law's for bed rest. As soon as Dongsheng left, her mother-in-law bought meat and shrimp and, along with her sisters-in-law, made three delicacy dumplings. She patiently taught Fue how to peel shrimp and roll dough. Fue felt like she had found a mother, and she was incredibly happy. Well, since you didn't have a mom growing up, who else would I care for? Wu Yun interrupted, wrapping an arm around her shoulders. I may not have much money, but every New Year's Eve, I make sure you get a bowl of dumplings. But you never come. No matter how poor home is, it's still home. Why do you look down on us so much? Fuei gently removed her hand and continued explaining, My mother-in-law told me that making dumplings is a skill, and cooking them is an art. Three delicacy dumplings should be freshly made and boiled. Once the water is boiling, you toss the dumplings in, let them roll once, then scoop them out. That's the freshest. Mom, try one. As she spoke, Fuei expertly made a dumpling and offered it to Wuyun. Wuyun was stunned. Jiang Dongsheng frowned, and Meixin was dumbfounded. Mom, I followed your instructions to the letter. Try it and see if I've mastered the essence. Fuei cornered Wuyun, who had no choice but to accept and swallow the dumpling without chewing. How is it? Tastes okay. Fuei asked sweetly, ignoring Wuyun's discomfort. Seeing Fuei pick up another dumpling, Wuyun turned pale. Delicious, delicious. Let's wait until after the broadcast to eat together. Sister-in-law, you should try one too. Weren't you always longing to eat my heart-filled dumplings? Here's your chance. Fuei offered the dumpling to Meixin. Meixin's smile twisted. Sister-in-law, don't choke around. The filling is still raw. It's not safe to eat. Not safe. Fuei laughed. Then why did you serve me these when I was pregnant? Because I grew up motherless and had never eaten dumplings? This you. Meixin was at a loss for words. Jiang Dongsheng looked at his mother, his eyes reddening. Seeing her son about to react, Wu Yun elbowed Meixin hard. Stop talking nonsense. It's not raw. If you won't eat, I will. Wu Yun grabbed the plate from Fu Wei, and Fu Wei watched as she started devouring the dumplings one by one. Jiang Dongsheng became anxious and grabbed the chopsticks, poking open a dumpling to reveal the raw shrimp and meat filling inside, with the green leeks still crisp and bright. Wu Yun's face turned as green as the leeks. But seasoned as she was, she wasn't about to be defeated by such a minor incident. Oh, daughter-in-law, you're just being petty. Look, I'm an old woman managing a big family. Cooking for so many people, who can guarantee there won't be a mistake? If you had told us, we could have just reheated it, right? But you left without a word. Who knew what part of our service you were unhappy with? You're holding a grudge for 20 years over a bowl of dumplings, never letting my grandson share a meal with me. Aren't you being a bit too small-minded? I've never held a grudge against those dumplings. In fact, I'm grateful for them. If I hadn't taken those dumplings back to the kitchen that day, I wouldn't have overheard your conversation with your daughter-in-law. She said leeks can cause miscarriages, and serving them raw would do the trick. She said it would be better if I miscarried, because the baby wouldn't bear the Jiang name, and she didn't want to serve an outsider. This, this. Meixin turned pale with fear. Wuyin tried to argue, but suddenly realized they were still live streaming. She lunged to grab the phone. Jiang Dongsheng raised his hand, gesturing to Fuei. Go on. I want to say that making dumplings is like being a person. The filling is the heart. If you are sincere, I will be sincere. If you are raw, I will be raw. I have no ties to the Jiang family. Don't try to morally coerce me. I've never been one to suffer in silence. After Fuei finished speaking, Jiang Dongsheng returned the phone to Wu Yun and lifted the curtain. Wu Yun's face flushed red and white alternately as she lowered her head and walked out. Meixin, too, dared not say another word and slinked away. It was undoubtedly the most dramatic live broadcast they had ever done. Without a doubt, it would become a media sensation. Ignoring the customers outside, Zhang Dongsheng pulled Fu Wei into his arms. Fu Wei pushed him away. After all these years, she no longer needed comforting. A tray of raw dumplings was nothing. They could always make more. A call to settle the bill came from outside. Zhang Dongsheng stood still while Fu Wei smiled and walked out. 
A refined young couple was waiting, the girl's eyes red-rimmed. The young man scanned the QR code, paid, and hugged his girlfriend as they left. He turned back and said to Fue, Big sister, I reported those two. Don't worry, they'll be banned soon enough. Author's note, here it is, the soul-searching questions from our leading lady today. 1. When caught in the turbulent world of in-law family dynamics, should you lament your fate and complain about the unfairness of life, or turn around decisively and strive for self-reliance? 2. In an era where internet-famous restaurants are everywhere, should you abandon your principles and go for quick profits, or uphold tradition and become a craftsman who creates heartfelt and comforting meals? In this flashy city and hurried life, come to our Rose Dumpling House for a bowl of genuine three-flavored dumplings and savor a story filled with the myriad tastes of life.